Hey there guys, Robert here, and welcome to episode 3 of Rob Geo Ranks. For this episode, I'm going to be ranking this 256 Pi album called Noontide Side Attic Drifter. This is the 8th and currently most recent mainline album from the one Tommy came for, aka The Wonky Angle or in this ranking, 256 Pi. Let it be known when I say that through watching his Wonky Angle reviews over the years, Tommy has been one of two people who has inspired me to make this series, along with Searman, of course. I really enjoyed his previous album, 044444, which was the first album of his to incorporate lyricism. It was a really unique entrant in his catalog, as the lyrics on that album were about the time throughout the majority of 2018 when he hit a motivational brick wall. And more than anything, it was truly a great house and synth pop album of his from front to back, and I loved the inclusion of the vocoders. And it was also his tightest and shortest album to date by a significant margin. So given how I enjoyed that album, I had really high expectations for Noontide's Side Attic Drifter. And, um, I can safely say that this is probably Tommy's best album to date. He noted that this is also his weirdest and densest project to date. And I guess that kind of rings true to the overall atmosphere of the album and also some of the titles of the tracks. Just look at this shit. This one also has probably the strongest message I've ever came across on a 256 Pi album. You see, this album has a loose concept of having ADHD, and I'll, and I'll say what I feel the message of the album is at the end of this ranking. This album has a lot of inspirations, with the most direct one being The Orb and their albums The Dream and No Sounds Are Out of Bounds, and other inspirations including Orbital, Hybrid, 808 State, etc. The variety of this album is also pretty great, containing some of Tommy's darkest tracks and even some of his most unique tracks to date. And I think that'll segue us into the ranking proper. Before I go over my ranking, I just want to say that this is all my opinion and you can feel free to either agree or disagree with me. This ranking is not based on popularity, but rather on personal enjoyment and nostalgia. And um, I have, I'm sorry if I haven't said this in the previous two episodes, but no, this ranking is not final. And it's possible that it may change depending on my mood. Also, please try to not take my opinion too seriously, and if you think your favorite track from the album is not ranked high enough in my ranking, then that's fine too. Just make your own ranking. So now without any further ado, let's get started. Kicking things off at number 18, we have Frenetic Detroit Editions. So we're starting off with one of the few interludes on the album, and this is probably my least favorite one out of all of them because it's the one that I least have the urge to return to. But much like Wayward's Waiting for the World, there's no track on here that I don't like, so that's not really saying much. This interlude starts with this really cool analog synth bass contrasting very well with this violin or stringish lead, but then around the 22 second mark it transitions into this dark atmosphere and this Texas Beach voice others out words like, explore the universe without moving a muscle, wander around looking for something and not know why. And then it transitions seamlessly into selected subtractions, a track we'll get to later on in this ranking. Overall, even though it's in dead last because it's just an interlude, I won't deny that it's an interesting one at that. Next, at number 17, I have placed Definite Addiction Retorts. I really don't have anything too much to say about this one because this is another interlude on here. Its dark, robotic, and spacious soundscapes are spot on though, and the Texas Speech voice fits well on here again. That's really all I gotta say about this one. It's a pretty nice interlude though. Next, at number 16, I have Tidiest Interaction Fodder. Another interlude, though I do really like the atmosphere and overall vibes of this one a lot. It feels like I'm actually in a spaceship with those robotic sounds and that high flutish world influence like instrument contrasting with the dark and muffled soundscapes. Texas Beast voice is again, really fitting on here. At the 41 second mark, a string section fades in and so do the reversed vocal samples at the 46 second mark, segueing its way into Virus Fluke and the Piccolo. We'll get to that track later on. Overall, I got nothing much to say about this, but it's another pretty nice interlude on the album. Next at number 15, I have placed Tired and Dictive Force Station. Yet another interlude though, this may be my favorite out of all of them because of how seamless it goes from a pleasant atmosphere to a dark and spacious one. It starts off with these pleasant chirping sounds and then around the 2 or 3 second mark these talking vocal samples start fading in. At around the 11 second mark a really cool synth bass starts coming in and then around the 21 second mark there is this really cool sound effect of a space shuttle taking off. That in turn allows the interlude's atmosphere to go from pleasant to dark and spacious real quick. The Texas Beach voice starts fading in 26 seconds in, saying things like do you think you're lost or in the right place? Inertia is maximum, gravity is zero, beginning, movement, or changing direction is difficult. Seeing what will befall you without movement is not enough. This track also makes a very subtle transition into an unspecified interval of time at the end. We'll get to that track later on. As soon as I heard the voice say an unspecified interval, I immediately knew we were transitioning into that track. 
obviously. Overall, it's another pretty nice interlude on the album, and I'm honestly shocked that I had quite a bit to say about it. Next, at number 14, I have placed No One Has Joined Your Call. KME. I really love the atmosphere of this one. It kind of makes me feel like I'm walking on a new planet that I've never discovered before, and it seems like it's a tropical one at that with, with its rainy sound effects and muted ambient synth passages. There's even a slow and beautiful piano melodies are in there for good measure, and it does a great job of blending in with the overall atmosphere of this track. That melody is also simultaneously a teeny bit creepy because some notes in the melody are off key. But I personally think that it's a part of this album's charm of being a weird and somewhat dark project. I also hear a sound effect near the beginning of someone making a phone call, hence the title of the track, which is really clever. So overall, I feel like this is an extended interlude on the album, but I still think that it's a pretty great track on the album that is worth listening to. Next, at number 13, I have placed what I wouldn't give to have a June with nothing notable happening. And here we have unquestionably the darkest track on the entire album. I feel like there are so many sounds incorporated in, th in this one that I don't even know where to start. Regardless if I place this in the, in the bottom third of my ranking. In the beginning, there are some moderate wind noises followed by some chattering, and some of the synth choices in this one in general are really creepy. The wind noises even get progressively louder in the first half. Somewhere in the middle, there is this overly dramatic orchestra combined with these creepy vocal samples. This is a track with so much going on that I don't think that I have anything too much to say about it. This one really needs to be listened to to be believed because this one sure was gloriously unsettling to listen to. In a great way, that is. I love this one. Next, at number 12, I have placed IO2, Carnage of the Polling Antibodies. And now we move on to the IO trilogy, starting with my least favorite of the three. Regardless, I still think this track is pretty great. I really like that brass section contrasting with this vibraphone melody and that really cool kick drum in the beginning to give it an orchestral flair. I especially love the synth choices on this one, especially at the 55 second mark. I also love how the 152 mark it transitions into this funky breakbeatish section, like that's really cool, especially with its catchy synth bass. And the sample about this guy talking about how there are colors representing different types of particles is really fitting on here, and sounds like he has more scientific knowledge than me. It kind of reminds me of the track Senses of the Mind by Sidney Blue, where there is this sample about a scientist who says that at times there are periods where the senses in our minds can no longer respond to moderate stimulation. So overall, even though this is my least favorite of the I.O. tracks when it comes down to replay value, this is still a really interesting, enjoyable, and just flat out fun track from front to back. Great stuff! Next, at number 11, I have placed Aluminum Sunset, Delay of the 13th Frontier. So this one is really interesting. It begins with these space shuttle-like sounds, and then we get those muted synth pads contrasting very well with these vocal samples that kind of sound like a NASA conversation. For example, Roger Roll's Discovery. We also get these really impressive synth arpeggios to boot as well. At the 155 mark, we get this cool drum pattern that reminds me a little bit, little bit of the track Silverside from Outer Curse Amber. At the 233 mark, it transitions into this funky section, which really adds to the overall experience. See, what I love about this album is that on some tracks, the style completely changes. In one moment, there could be a nice little IDM section, and at the next, it could transition into the usual funky breakbeats. That's really and truly impeccable. It even gets jazzier at the 448 mark for some variety with its nice little vibraphone melodies and a really fun saxophone solo thrown in there at the 507 mark. Therefore, it's a pretty brilliant track and I recommend giving this one a spin. Neat! Next, at number 10, I have placed Noontide. So, you remember when I said that this project is kind of a weird and somewhat dark one? And that what I wouldn't get to have a June with nothing notable happening is the darkest track on the album, personally? Well, Noontide, on the other hand, is the weirdest track on the album for me as it is played in a 7-4 time signature, which in turn caught me off guard on first listen. But also this track is a really unique track on here, making it one of the best examples of just how much of a great job Tommy does with experimenting with different kinds of sounds on here, and does so with flying colors. And I have quite a bit to say about it too. The track begins with some ocean sounds followed by a guitar that fades in at the 3 second mark. At the 12 second mark, a chord progression that plays on the electric piano comes in, and then at the 33 second mark, the beat comes in and sounds absolutely dope. The synth bass line and the cowbell melody are both really damn catchy as all hell. A catchy synth melody that happens at the 43 second mark is really cool. It sounds like it should be in a nostalgic sounding modern era game, and that is definitely a compliment. And then at the 54 second mark, there are very soft pads that start to come in, and that's really amazing. There is also a bleeping melody that plays at the 115 mark, which is pretty brilliant as well. And then at the 125 mark, the chord progression switches up, like, 
it's awesome. At the 146 mark, we get this really awesome breakdown section with the usage of a dope synth bass, flute arpeggios, synth pads, and so much more. Overall, this has to be a serious high on the album, regardless if it's only at number 10 on this ranking. Just flat out great. Next, at number 9, I have placed Puzzling Flame. I really love the atmosphere in this one too. It also feels like I'm in a very warm tropical rainforest, filled with xylophones, flute melodies, warm synth pads, jazzy electric pianos, forest sound effects, and more. I love how the 336 mark it goes from pleasant to creepy so quickly with, with its dark string section blending in very well with the overall atmosphere. But then at the 418 mark it becomes more welcoming with its jazzy electric pianos again. Also in some parts of this track we get this deep choir like voice that also blends in very well with the overall vibe we get from this track. Just wow. Thinking about this now I wouldn't be surprised if this could be featured in the soundtrack to a dramatic movie about exploring through the Amazon rainforest or something or maybe just any tropical landscape in general. What a very atmospheric track this one is. Go give this one a listen. Next, at number 8, I have placed IO1, Virus Fluke, and The Piccolo. My metal favorite of all the tracks in the IO trilogy, and I really just love the funk edge on this one. The bass guitar melody is really catchy, and so is the flute melody. The scientific vocal sample that I mentioned before when I talked about IO2 is really amazing and really fits on here. I also love how at the 55 second mark, the bass line completely changes and a trumpet solo is thrown there for good measure, which is really cool. As for other aspects of this track, the alpha melodies are really beautiful and catchy, and the second flute melody that plays at around the 226 mark is really impressive. Thinking about the funk edge to this now, it kind of reminds me of a track from Daft Punk's Random Access Memories, but much more fast paced. Overall, this track is really great and deserves my recommendation. Great stuff to be sure. Next, at number 7, I placed Selected Subtractions 85 to 92. First of all, nice 85 to 92 reference. And second, this track is really freaking great. This track starts out all robotic, with the percussion kind of reminding me of Audiker's Clipper from Triopede for some reason. The prolonged acid is synth face that is played in some parts near the beginning is really cool. At the 57 second mark, it really starts to get punchier and has a really nice melody to boot. It slowly but surely gives me a funk edge again at the 125 mark with its catchy as all hell bass line. There is also this occasional robotic vocal sample that happens in the first half of the track as well. There's even a breathy vocal sample that whispers, I love you, I love you, at around the 251 mark. One of my favorite aspects of the track is that around the 236 mark, there is this arpeggiated acid based synth melody, which is absolutely fire. At the 319 mark, the style completely changes from having a funk edge to more of an IDM edge to it. I also love how at the 459 mark there are paths that form some sort of a chord progression and it applies to the funk edge feel I get yet again at the 513 mark with its catchy bass line contrasting well with the piano and glockenspiel melodies. At the 624 mark the song's key is raised up by one semitone and makes a turn for the more bombastic 14 seconds later. And then the song's key is raised up again this time by two more semitones. I feel like I gave out a lot of information just like when I talked about Noontide but let me tell you, this one is a highlight and I recommend it. Next, at number 6, I have placed an unspecified interval of time. Ah yes, the big one. Sorta. I say that because this is the first track from the album I listened to before the album came out. It opens up with these guitars and it is followed by a piano bass melody, a string plug melody, and a, and a cello melody, which sounds very alluring when meshed together. There's even a glockenspiel melody thrown in there for good measure as well. At the 129 mark, it starts to give me a funk edge again as per usual with its 3 4 6 8 rhythm. I mean, the whole song is in 3 4 6 8, because why not? It also contains this really cool synth bass contrasting very well with the flute and glockenspiel melody. There's even a harpsichord melody thrown in there too. Other aspects of this track that I can point out are that the string sections that play around the 319 mark are really beautiful, and some of the occasional vocal samples are pretty nice. Overall, it's a pretty dope track, and there's a pretty great reason as to why this track was released individually on SoundCloud before the album came out a month later. Next, at number 5, I have placed IO4, Lighting the Trip Fantastic. And now we're up to the tracks that I consider to be in awesome to perfect territory, starting with my favorite track in the entire IO trilogy, which may also be a reference to the track Tripping the Light Fantastic from BT's IMA. This track starts with a metallic topper with a nice little vibraphone melody, I'm a sucker for vibraphone melodies, blending in very well with an incredible bass line. The track then starts to get punchy and I'm like, oh hell to the freaking yes. <laughs> Other positive things I would like to say about this track are that the electric pianos are really fun to listen to, the way it transitions into a more lounge-esque section is really incredible, the string sections in that same part are as beautiful as always, the arpeggiated synths that come in at the 326 mark are really cool, and the way it transitions into the spherical discharge is really impeccable as all hell. We'll get to that track later on. 
I mean, all the transitions on that album are pretty subtle, but that one in particular, sheesh. I swear, the way how punchy this song is, it reminds me of the track Burn by Tempo Justo. To me, I feel like that track has a similar kind of energy and punchiness to this one. Therefore, this track is such a blast and is an absolute must listen. Awesome stuff to be sure. Next, at number 4, I have placed 858.2.21.303 Corruption Staircase. This track is really damn amazing. This track actually kind of reminds me of the, of the music to that Piracy is No Party thing Joey Perleone made. I personally think that the beat on this track reminded me even more of Silverside than Aluminum Sunset did. The melodies on this track are really dark and the vocal sample really fits on here. The way the beat switches up on certain parts of this track are really cool as well, and the chord progression at the 155 mark is really damn clean. I also love how at the 253 mark, the atmosphere starts to become super filled to the brim with reverb, sounding very dark and spacious in the process. Just... Whoa. Overall, this track is a serious highlight on here, and I recommend just going somewhere far away from home and let this track's general atmosphere sink in, because this one really deserves to be listened to all the way through. Fantastic track. Next, at number 3, I have placed the cylindrical discharge, Stempire Pate. And, um, okay. Jesus Christ. Now this, this is how you open up a 256 Pi album. The moment I heard the vocal sample utter out the words, good morning, followed by a huge cloud of robotic noises, I was almost immediately hooked into the whole album, not just the track I'm talking about now. This track is such a really amazing tone setter and really prepares you for what you're getting into. 38 seconds in, a slow drum pattern comes in and a trumpet lead is thrown in there because why not? Even some fast paced hi-hats come in 13 seconds later, but then one minute into this track is where it really starts to bang. Like. Tommy went full on prodigy in this part with its skittery breakbeats, nostalgic sounding bass, and fun synth lead. At the 129 mark, the trumpet lead comes back again and it contrasts very well with a really catchy bass line and some robotic like female vocal samples. Other aspects of the production on this track that I absolutely love are that the sounds of the electric guitars that happen around 2 minutes in are really dope, the trumpets get more jazzy at the 221 mark, the drum pattern changes up at around the 259 mark, the synth pads that happen at the 442 mark are really cool, and just the overall dystopian vibe this track gives me is unreal. Almost kind of like Orbital's Petrol from Insides. Therefore, this track is just a really amazing opener, does a really fantastic job at hooking you right into the sound of the album. Awesome track. Next, at number 2, I have placed 410,757,864,530. Okay, now this one is absolutely impressive. In fact, this was my favorite track on the album for a while before a certain other track we'll get to next recently surpassed it. It opens up with these robotic synth watches and the Lurie sounding choir. There is also a voice sample that utters out the words 4107578645300, much like the title of the track. 47 seconds in is where the track really starts to bang because there is this other voice sample that goes bang gack or something like that. And then it goes full on Aphex Twin this time, reminding me of tracks from some of his albums and EPs like Drug Hughes and Come to Daddy. The bass line is once again very inescapable from my mind, and I love how very glitchy the beats on this track are in some parts, reminding me a bit of Zygomatic 17. But while those things are indeed incredible in this track, the most mind-blowing thing about it is the style switch up at the 207 mark. Like, at that part it goes from an aggressive drum and bass and breakbeat style track to more of a lounge and jazz style track at this part, with tropical-like percussion contrasting very well with some beautiful pianos and fun and impressive sax and trumpet solos. Just, literally, no words for this part. It is freaking mind-blowing, and it's is, is also simultaneously, and I say this word a lot at this point, impeccable. I got nothing much to say about this track. This track is such a phenomenal one to listen to, providing the listener with such a mind-bending and spectacular experience. Damn near perfect track. And finally, at number one, I have placed the Spherical Discharge. Conical. Cubic. Coronary. And, um... What an ending. Oh my sweet lord, what an ending. <laughs> this was the most difficult track to place on the ranking initially. But then this turned out to become a very close race between this and 410 billion. But since the message on this track is very strong here, it couldn't not be number one. 
Knowing things are wrong and lacking the ability to make it right, operating on the surface of a hell world, only finding more and more danger, less and less than you belong, may very well be the most meaningful set of lines on any track on this album, period. I also really love how the drum pattern's tempo starts to get cranked up at the 25 second mark. And on top of that, the synth bass on here is really damn amazeballs. Two minutes in, it goes into this really nice breakbeat part with a really catchy bass line again as per usual, and also has some really nice melodies to boot. Especially at the 3.30 mark, where the melodies by that part sound plucky and glitchy. At around the 4.37 mark, the track then starts to slow down, and the 5 minute mark is where everything really starts to end. With huge amounts of robotic sound effects and really beautiful ambient soundscapes, the Texas Beach Boys then utters out the final words, nothing is truly universal infinite points in space and no one occupies the same one. But always remember you are not alone. I also love the sample at the end where the guy goes, do the best you can with what you got and uh, have a good day. <laughs> like what a high note for this album to go out on. Because not only is the message of this track really resonant, not to mention that it also rings true to the album in general, but it also simultaneously provides a gloriously essential listening experience with headphones. This is a track that I really and truly recommend very strongly, and is well deserving of the top spot on this ranking. Perfect track to be sure. So yeah, that was Noontide Side Attic Drifter, and um, like I mentioned before, this may very well be my favorite album 256 Pi has ever put out. No joke. Tommy demonstrates that he can really experiment with so many different unique sounds, and he succeeds to immaculate effect. It may not be a perfect album by any stretch, but every track feels like they belong together thanks to the transitions and everything. It makes me feel like I'm watching a sci-fi action movie about going to different planets in space. Even the interludes, while I rank them near the bottom, they really don't feel out of place either. Not only is the variety on this album pretty damn amazing, from weird sounding tracks like Noon Titan and Unspecified Interval of Time, to very dark sounding tracks like What I Wouldn't Give to a Jumin's Nothing Notable Happening in Puzzling Flame, to real resonant and serious highlights like 410 Billion, The Cylindrical Discharge, 858 Corruption Staircase, and The Spherical Discharge, but the overall message of this album is compelling. I feel like the message on here is that there are many people who feel like that they are alone, and there are many people who less feel like that they are one with the world. And there are especially many people with, you know, the, you know, the same struggles like that. But this album here reminds us that, you know, you're not alone. There are many people in this world with different struggles. And this album tackles this message in a uh, very cohesive manner. Before I unveil my rating, Tommy, thank you. Thank you so much for being such a huge inspiration for this series. I really have to tip my hat to you. For not only inspiring me, but also opening me up to artists that I've never looked deep into before in the first place, like Audiker, Fortet, BT, Orbital, and even Aphex Twin. For a very long time, I have been listening to just Electro House and Progressive House. But through the help of watching your reviews over the years, it allowed me to open my mind and listen to a wider variety of different electronic sounds. Not just Electro House and Progressive House, but also IDM and Downtempo. Therefore, expanding my musical taste. But as for this album, this was such an extraordinary experience from front to back and I highly recommend it. This was really great. I'm overall feeling an 8.7 out of 10. So what do you think about Noon Tight Sight Attic Drifter? If you have any thoughts on it, then I suggest leaving it down in the comment section down below. The Bandcamp link to this album will also be linked in the description down below if you want to get this album a listen. If you have any albums you want me to rank next, feel free to leave your suggestions and recommendations in the comments. Also, be sure to like this video, share this one with your friends if you want to, and leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe as we're on the road to 6,000 subscribers. That's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.